um, All right. Um, and Abhishek, you had a question? Uh, when I saw the reporting uh, for the first batch, and, uh, I wanted to look at the master data management and be a Okay. Um, the question Abhishek had for the rest of the class is what is MDM, Master Data Management? This is an SAP product um, which is now part of the business object suite. And it is there to help you manage master data. And why do you want to manage master data outside of SAP systems is because if you look at, let's say, customer master, where a company wants to maintain a single source of truth for all of its customers. While SAP only had R3, it was okay because there's only one application using the customer master. But now you could have the customer master as part of R3, as part of CRM, as part of SRM, as part of APO, as part of so many products, and now you're starting to duplicate your customer records. And the Typically what happens if you duplicate any data, sooner or later it will get out of sync because people will edit it, people will change it, and it will go on its own merry path. And now after four or five years, you will have a big data cleansing effort, you know, which you would have to undertake and resynchronize everything together. So SAP provides you with a tool where you can maintain all these master data elements centrally and have them syndicated to multiple different systems using SAP's ALE and RSV technology. Also, at the same time, it lets you upload data, cleanse data, uh, manage data through a workflow before a customer gets created if there are approval processes, all of those approval processes. So to manage master data effectively, enterprise-wide across multiple SAP products. No, this is a part of the business object. Yes, it used to be, you know, before, I mean, MDM, SAP had even before they bought business objects, but now that they have bought business objects, they have made it part of the business object suite of products. Business objects, um, the way it is evolving now, SAP's business object portfolio um, has in it the traditional business object uh, applications mm -hmm. and two of the existing SAP applications, uh, the first one being, uh, actually three of the existing SAP applications, the first one being MDM, second one being GRC, Governance, Risk and Compliance, and third one being BPC, Business Planning and Consolidation. Right. So, um, so that's just uh, you know how how the business object technology is evolving. Um, maybe what I'll do here is uh, for those who are remote, just make sure you scroll down a little bit um, where I'm typing, and you look at um, in other SAP products. That's where I'm typing. So you'll have to scroll down a little bit. And and you just need to know these. Sometimes business objects is referred to just as BO. Sometimes it's referred to as Bob J or business OBJ, Bob J. Um, and GRC, this is governance, risk, and compliance. This is more for audit and security aspects of an SAP implementation. Governance, risk, and compliance. Business object itself has got as part of it, um, maybe I'll do it up here, has got as part of it BO Enterprise. This is their main OLAP engine where the business object universe concept is implemented. 
and from where you can have front-end access called Webby. Celsius. Um, Crystal, Crystal Reports was bought by Business Objects before they got bought. It has got Business Object Data Services, which is their ETL product. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. And it has got Business Objects um, MDM. But you know, I'm just writing the traditional products here, so I'm going to take this, take this off from here. Um, it's got Business Objects Federator. Right. So these three for Data Federation. All right, so this is just so that you're aware. And you know, that that's what one thing you're going to notice is that there's going to be always number of changes um, happening um, in the SAP landscape, and one has to be cognizant of those changes, right, in terms of terminology, products, so on and so forth. Uh, sir, when you new business object, is it like? You have to have business for data warehousing, yes. See, it means it's really a data warehousing product, right? So SAP's strategy is that for data warehousing going forward, you need to use business object. That's what their that's what their recommendation is. Um, uh, is that's what their recommendation is going forward. Um, what I'll do is. Yeah, you can turn that on anyhow uh, from from down. Um, and you know, once we talk about data warehousing, we're going to talk more about business objects. But now, since business objects is one of the major divisions of SAP, SAP is also given to it its GRC product and MDM product, right? Um, but before business objects, SAP had its own OLAP tool also called Business Explorer Bex. Um, you know, which actually is installed on all of your machines here. Business object itself is not a NetWeaver product, right? So it's one of the only product lines, you know, where a core product is a different technology, not a NetWeaver technology. Why? Because it was bought. It was not built by SAP. Um, from a question standpoint, uh, people who are remote, any questions from what was discussed last week? So in all these projects, uh, products, where would you put SD, sales and distribution? SD, as it's mentioned here, is the module in ERP or ECC6 right here, right? If you scroll up, sales and distribution is, these are modules within ERP Enterprise Resource Planning. The latest version of ERP Enterprise Resource Planning is ECC6. Um, right? Um, Right. Um, you, you know, I, you know who all are here, right? 